Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again, the World Masters in Virginia. And this is the first of the men's over 45 semi-final matches. We have Nick Taylor on the right with the black shorts. Englishman from uh, England and Jersey, the island of Jersey now. And he is playing Galen Le Chimel, uh, American English and sitting next to me in the commentary box. My pleasure again to have Richard Millman. Thanks, Chris. Great to be here. I am so excited about this match. Hi. We've got two of the premier racketsmiths of this generation here. Nick Taylor, classic, beautiful lines, incredible control, uh, delicate movement. Galen Le Chaminon, some of the most amazing deceptive wrist skills you'll ever see. Um, very friendly with Galen, he's from the south where I live, he uh, works at, uh, or he's the uh, manager at Charleston Squash Club, so I'm sure we've got people from Charleston tuning in to follow their great favourite, and he's had a great last couple of years, after a few years of injury he's lost a tremendous amount of weight, and uh, recently did extremely well in the British Open, losing to the eventual winner, Zuko Kubakeli. Uh, and meanwhile, you know, Nick Taylor, as I, I'm sure Chris will explain to us, a former British champion, world number 14. Yes, thank you, Richard. Great introduction and very exciting. Uh, Nick Taylor, former world number 14, and uh, with 10 PSA titles under his belt, still playing fantastic squash. He's the defending over 45 world, world champion. And uh, he's now in Sudbury, Massachusetts. So my prediction is a, a, a comfortable win for Nick Taylor, but some fantastic entertainment on the way. I will say that Galen is quite capable of upsetting anybody's predictions. So let's see what happens. Hang on to your seats, guys, because this could be interesting. So as a little side note, Galen has actually won the Swiss over 35s and was Masters runner-up in the British Nationals, the British Open and the British Amateur. And uh, also the runner-up in the British Open just six weeks ago. So obviously playing well, must be match fit and coming into this uh, with some great results. So Nick is definitely going to be tested. Folks might be interested in Galen's training recently that he's developed himself. Uh, he's uh, got a long, very strong bungee, and he connects it to the back door of the court, and he does resistance ghosting. And I can tell you that his improvement in the last two years has been enormous. He's lost a lot of weight. He's always had the racket, 
But uh, I'm very interested in this bungee training that he does, and uh, I'd like to research it further. Is that one of those, don't try this at home unless you've got a really strong back door wow. to the court? <laughs> Indeed. So early stages here, some long rallies. Patient, both players happy to keep the ball at the back of the court a fair bit. Good exchange at the front there by both. Some great speed. And there's that racket work from Galen, which was wasn't going to fool Nick Taylor. Nick kind of just watched him do that creative stuff and then responded to the drive that he hit. Now, as we said in the last match, one of Peter Gilby's great strengths is always being in position. And I think you'll see that even more with Nick Taylor. He is a superb strategist and positionally one of the best. Yeah, I've got to agree with you, uh, Richard. He's he has been, Nick has constantly been refining and working on his game over the last many years and um, more, you know, possibly as much as when he was a professional player and still you know, coaching in, in Jersey, but he's constantly training and playing some of the top players and as you'll see, never seems to be in the wrong place, court work is is excellent, racket work is excellent, and I actually really love the way he uses the volley. He, he's always looking for the volley, and often if he hasn't got a lot of time, he'll still volley the ball and just put it nice and straight and tight, short on the front wall, and, and you know, feeding up the pace that uh, taking the ball early gives him. Little error there from Nick, and uh, Galen hanging tough, but he's being twisted and turned. Um, Folks may not know that, uh, speaking as a U.S. squash person, we are delighted that Nick has now moved to Massachusetts and is building his academy there in Massachusetts. Um, he, as Chris has said, is a fantastic volleyer, and I know that he's going to bring to the mix of teaching in this country an understanding of taking that ball early in the international game. Exciting for all of us. Very much so great resource for US squash and I'm sure he's only been here a few months but as time goes by he'll get more involved in uh, events and as we have a little uh, you get a winner there it it the stood right side. in front of me I'm sorry he stood right in front of me uh, the ball was too good the ball was a winner and out four five so no let given there which uh, th that's a bit of a surprise to me I thought Nick really had a swing there I think because Nick was a bit flat-footed and didn't quite understand what was going on, he didn't make any movement, and that's what confused the referee, but I, I, I agree with you. So uh, Nick brushes that aside and wins the next point with a beautiful counter drop, so some good squash here. Nick just a little bit steadier. Another unforced error from Galen there, giving Nick a 7-4 lead early on in this match. Lob there from Nick Taylor, creating the opportunity at the front for the second. Simple shot there, lovely hold, got Galen on his heels and then he pushed it, simple straight drive to a great length to win the point. Very low risk, but uh, the quality of his shots creating that opportunity. Galen being such a talented racketsmith, I think sometimes does get tempted into trying to do too much and his variety of shot brings more rewards when it's mixed up with simple, basic fundamentals. Um, and I think he's maybe getting sucked in by Nick's pressure here to try too much too early. So Nick Taylor with that error from Galen, Nick Taylor with six game balls to take this first with a fantastic first game performance. I don't remember seeing him make a mistake in this game, Richard. Not an unforced error anyway. And uh, very clinical performance from Nick Taylor that first game, taking it 
You see Galen being coached there by his friend and fellow English-American Lee Scott from Louisville Boat Club. I don't know what they can conjure up here, but uh, Galen's going to have to get Nick deep in the back corner and hold him there if he's going to stop this rampage. Well, while well, the players get some water and take their advice from the coaches in their corners, a little shout-out from, uh, I just want to say a hi to Angela Goff, who's out there in Atlanta, um, her husband here battling away in the over-75s. And um, I think, Richard, you want to have a little shout-out to someone? Oh, yeah, I forgot to wish uh, our good friend Udo Kyle uh, Happy birthday. He's uh, from Germany. He's here in the tournament. And uh, I'm sure Udo is extremely pleased. He's not had the best uh, last year. He's had a lot of injuries. And he's really put a great performance in here. While I'm on as well, uh, I'd shout out to Angela, who's a great friend. Uh, and uh, I had the privilege of coaching her husband, Michael, this morning. But unfortunately, Howard Armitage was just a little too strong today. And stuff but the peloton continues to move forward Richard absolutely our team of teams uh, the most inspirational community of squash uh, anywhere in the world we get together every two years uh, in the world masters and of course for those of you that don't know there's also the world masters games seconds. which is the largest sporting event of any kind in the world the next one is going to be in Japan in 2021. So I encourage any of you who love sport and love squash to go and start training for 2021 where every sport in the world is represented and we of squash go to take our place in what is effectively the Olympics of Masters sport. Taylor Lee, one game to love. One I'm off. going straight to the court after this match to start my ghosting regime, Richard. So, Dick Taylor, clinical first game. Galen uh, Le Chamont has to come up with something different to try and break, break Nick out of his rhythm here. He made a few too many mistakes in the first. And uh, we'll see how his mindset is as uh, the second game begins. Well, that's not a great start. As we're watching, uh, again, I advise viewers to spend a few minutes just watching Nick's position on the court. Uh, his shots are beautiful, but if you watch him off the ball also, you get a great indication of what a great player can do. Clinically positioning themselves almost like a proper goalie ready to defend any shot. Get it out, Caden. Too loud. A great analogy, Richard. The uh, the soccer goalie having to cover both sides of the goal and the low That's and the high the ball balls. Play. It's like Nick on the tee here. He's rackets up in the middle. He's alert to be able to move to the left or the right, cut off that volley if possible, and accelerate to the front. Stroke to That time, not good enough quality of shot. But. Uh, it is very much like that in covering the court and covering uh, the, the sides as well as going short and long. So, uh, of course, it's easy for the soccer goal, goalkeeper because he only has two posts to cover. We have four corners. And so, you know, those of you that are learning how to position on the court, uh, what we don't do as advanced players is stand on the tee. What we do is we defend the whole of the court from wherever the ball's coming from. And like a soccer goalie, we narrow down the angles of possibility. And we'll see Nick doing this, moving up on a ball that he's just played to cover all the angles he can enter. Soccer goalies is just so one-dimensional, really, isn't it? Squash is much better sport than you think. <laughs> so Nick 
Yes, lad. You see oh. Nick, when he played his drop shot there, had no interest in moving back to the tee because, again, he knew where he needed to be to cover the angles. And he feels hard done by not getting a stroke there, and I tend to agree. I don't know what you think. Yeah, position was perfect, and even though, you know, I think Galen played probably the best straight drive he could have done from the front right there. Nick, Nick's racket was there, and yeah, probably in my mind I'd have given a stroke because if he had hit it, it would have just come back off of Galen to some degree. Again, there's the drop from Nick, and before Galen even touched the ball, he was two, three feet in front of the short one. So a bit casual there by uh, Galen putting himself in yes, lad. in trouble. Nick, yeah, I would have asked Nick to play that too. So I think Nick's ill-advised to stop there because Galen was in trouble and he could have hurt Galen, even worked him for a couple of minutes there or a few more seconds anyway. Uh, instead of which, Galen's had a rest and Nick's lost his flow. Galen remonstrating with himself there because he knows that he's gone for a short, cheap shot when he should have been building the rally. And this is the a frustrating period for Galen. He's given, uh, you know, he's thrown a lot of stuff at Nick. He's tried a lot of different uh, things that he's good at and that generally against lesser opposition he would get dividends. But Nick Taylor is so good at covering the court. Look at that creative down the middle of the court there, making it awkward again. But Nick Taylor is making things very difficult for Galen, and, and the frustrations are coming out with the with the self-talk and and these errors that appear unforced. Kind of a, the ideas are running out for him. I think you make a great point, Chris. In that, for all of us squash players, we are suckered into using techniques, strategies, uh, shots that work against lesser players and we're encouraged to believe we'll work against better players and suddenly we have to rethink everything we're doing when our best squash rather than being an advantage is a disadvantage and gets us into trouble so that sort of shot from galen is just not going to be uh, any use Don't at all <clears throat> volley drop off the serve that was close to the service line so nick taylor Clinical again, putting the ball in these awkward positions just like there. And a uh, little uh, humour there from Nick, anticipating a stroke maybe, but clearly a stroke. 9-3 now in this second game. Another thing viewers may like to watch is when Nick is playing off the ball, you'll see his whole orientation of his body is leaning towards the ball, whether he's recovering or not is connected to the ball at all times. So there's that forehand cross-court volley, Nick, the uh, the one out of ten that uh, it's not a great percentage shot. Doesn't matter here, it doesn't make any difference. Nick Taylor taking the second game 11-4, so he now leads two games to love.
Taylor leads. Two games to love. Love all. Yes, lad. So, lots of uh, challenges here for love Galen Le Cheminon if he's going to do anything against Nick Taylor, who's just been clinical with quality as the uh, underlying theme of his game and not giving not giving him any opportunities and so Nick Taylor at two love up interestingly that was the first time I've seen Galen really rally to the back of the court uh, I don't know if he can maintain it but it brought dividends and Nick ended up playing a loose ball um, but Nick's straight back in here now after taking Galen in short and as we were saying in the break, Richard, it's just tough. When you're playing a world-class player like Nick Taylor, you don't get any free points. He's going to, he's clinical. He's not going to give you cheap points. You have to earn every single one. And, uh, you know, great going for a forehand cross-court volley, Nick, off the serve when you're 7-2 down and have a roller, but that's just not going to cut it when you want to, if you're trying to win the match. What do you think about... Uh the idea of Galen trying to use a little bit more height uh, to give himself time and get Nick to the back. I agree. I, he's got to be more patient. He's, he's got some great racket skill and, you know, arguably better racket skill than Nick Taylor when, you, when he's standing there and he's got a bit of time to be deceptive and use his wrist. But he's got to earn those positions and just a little bit more patience, getting that height, as you say, on the... On the on the ball to get the ball to the back like that. That's one of the key areas, and there, there he's actually had a, had a chance to do exactly that. And as you talked about, there's a demonstration of what incredible racket skill, particularly in the deception department that Galen has. Now, Galen was in control, but because he didn't move off his shot, he was out of position. I, suspect if the roles were reversed that Nick would have backed off and been in position before his opponent played. And, and also the, these shots, uh, those shots from the front left there Richard, they're, they're kind of all or nothing shots. He's run through the ball on that cross court and Nick got it back and it was the end of the point. On that shot just there he's kind of flicked, twisted his body to push it down the wall and if it wins the point he's going to win the point but Nick's too good to to lose the point on a one shot like that it, it has to be more strategic he's got to out he's got to get that length he's got to get Nick off the tee it doesn't speak to a long term plan it's short term and it's you know hit or miss having said that we can enjoy some some great racket skills at times from Galen Stroke to Taylor. Oh, so, stroke given and the ball was in the middle. Nick is allowed to hit the ball at any point that he wants. If, if he reshapes to take a swing a second time, it should be a let. So that, that was the only question there. And uh, referee deeming that Galen just crowded him and didn't move off the, off the ball to give him space. Patient rally here. Yes, lad. Thank you. Loose ball, let ball given. Six all in the third. This is kind of Galen's last ditched effort at trying to get something out of this match, and he's going back to you know a patient, more conservative game plan, which will give him that opportunity. Galen trying to make the point that the ball's tight, but of course if you completely prevent your opponent from having any attempt at playing the ball, it doesn't matter how tight it is, you're effectively not playing to the rules of the game, so the stroke went against him.
Galen definitely playing a better style of squash here. And uh, I feel as though if he'd started off the match in this way, he would have put himself in a better position. Yes, but he's in. Well, there's a snatched forehand cross court there, which gives Nick Taylor a very easy point to take him 8 7 up. A little bit more footwork would have helped there. So, Galen Le Chamont, last ditched effort. What a beautiful floated two wall boast there to a dying second bounce, uh, taking it back to eight all. So, could be an exciting finish to this game. Uh, Nick Taylor just feeling as though he was impeded and so chose to stop and ask for the let. And so we're going to play the point again. Galen in a lot of trouble here. And just overrunning the ball as he ran through it there, giving Nick a clear an open court and that cross court. So Nick, one step away from having a match board at 9-8. Lovely straight lob there from Galen, but good volley from Nick. Terrible volley from Nick there though. Very unusual, don't expect to see that. Um, Galen, uh, who I know quite well, has a wonderful sense of humor and doesn't spare the opportunity to clown a little bit, but he understands what's going on here. And that was uh, dangerously close to a stroke there. Ter poor cross court from Galen, but it's a let ball and it's nine all in this third game. And that's too much loose stuff. So, first match point for Nick Taylor to win this place in the final of the over 45s. And there it is, beautiful hold, simple shot wins it, a clinical display by Nick Taylor. Good fight at the end from Galen Le Chimino, but Nick Taylor takes it, three games to love. Wonderful performance by Nick, um, and I would just add to that that I think we're going to see Nick Taylor become one of the great leaders in American squash over the next few years. He leads by example. He is a community builder. He's a technician. So uh, I think as the years go by, Nick Taylor, not only in the United States, but in the world of squash, will become a voice that many, many people follow. Well done, Nick. Well, fantastic words there, Richard. And uh, Nick Taylor wins his place through to now he'll be playing against the winner of the next match the uh, other semi-final between adrian hansen and zuko kubekheli and uh, we look forward to that at 140 uh, which is only a couple of minutes and uh, 